One of the most difficult questions that I feel like anybody has ever asked, and I've even asked in my life, my wife Julia has asked in her life, is how to know what God is calling us to do. I feel like so many people have asked me, you know, Jacob, how do you know what God has called you to do in life? And what does your life look like in, your, in regards to your calling of what you do as a profession and what God's called you to? And I feel like it's just something that so many people struggle with. So many people don't understand how to truly know what God is calling them to do. Do, especially with this crazy world that we live in where there's so many voices trying to speak into our lives and it's really hard to hear the voice of God. And so today I want to break down how to know what God wants you to do or is calling you to do in your life in different situations, whether it's your profession, whether it's a situation or a decision that you have to make, whatever it might be, I want to break this down for you. So I have my Bible right here and I just want to start with scripture because scripture is the word of God and this is what leads and directs us in our life. And so in Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6, it says this, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. I saw another video made with this verse in regards to a similar topic and it is so, so important. I mean, we see so much in this verse, right? It says, acknowledge him and he he will lead your path. And so first off, I want to give an example of my life. Before I knew what God was calling me to do, I was a normal high school kid, as I'm sure a lot of you guys might be, or maybe, you know, you're later in life or whatever it might be. For me and my story, as a normal high school kid, I want to go into the medical field. And I felt like God was pulling me to use my knowledge towards science. And I think Julia was the same as well. Yeah. She wanted to go into the medical field. I specifically wanted to be a chiropractor. Yeah. I wanted to go to PA school and become a physician's assistant. And so, guys, I actually did three years. I spent my entire high school taking college courses, and then I took two years of college and graduated with my AA and my AS and was getting ready to get my bachelor's um, in biological sciences with an emphasis in medicine. When I accepted Christ into my life when I was 18 as a senior in high school, my life completely changed. And so during this time, I just had such a passion and a fire, preach the word of God and do all that. And so I just continued to pray, God, if this is your will, let me walk in your will and let me continue to go into the medical field. But if it's not your will, change my change my heart and change my direction completely. And I got to the point where I was so close to being done, I had three fourths of a semester left to get my bachelor's uh, in biology with an emphasis in medicine. And God called me to actually not pursue that anymore, but to go into ministry. And this was one of the hardest situations in my life ever because I literally dropped out from school. So much time and effort and money invested into this degree. And I was almost finished up getting ready to go to chiropractic school and God's like, no, you're called into ministry. It was the hardest decision I had to make and I prayed about it for a year and a half and God finally confirmed that when I was in that last year of college. And it was the scariest decision I've ever made in my life, but it was the best decision I've made in my life. Yeah. And Julia has a similar story. I, just to like keep it brief, it's pretty much pretty much the same thing. God just confirmed to me in several different ways. And honestly, when I figured out the direction I needed to go, I had no idea what would be in my future and Jacob was kind of the same way. Um, but God, it, there was no doubt in my mind that that was where God was calling me to go. And so that I knew that I would be disobeying if I did not not follow that path that he had for me and so yeah I think it's such it's so powerful hearing a testimony of that type of story but we know that you're maybe in a situation right now where you're like God's not making it very clear to me I have no idea where I'm supposed well, to go or yeah. what direction I'm supposed to be and, and that's what I was gonna say and I'm sure you guys were in our shoes where you know we were confused we were upset when it felt like God was calling us to do something else and we put yeah. so much time and effort and thought into one thing you know those are both feelings me and Julia felt and it's just hard it's a hard place to be and we're sure a lot of you guys have been there and so that's why it's so important to lean on this verse and this is is going to be the theme of us breaking this down and so we truly want to break down you know how to know what God wants me to do and what God is calling you to do and so that's why this verse is so important Proverbs 3 5 through 6 it says trust in the Lord with all of your heart it doesn't say with half of your heart it doesn't say with a I was literally your heart. thinking it that it says all of your heart yeah. that means to take everything that you have and to put trust in him even when it's hard even when the world says it doesn't make sense that you're gonna still put your trust in God even when your best friends say you're 
you're crazy that you're still gonna put your trust in God. And then it says this, lean not on your own understanding. I feel like so many times we try to make decisions based on the rationale of how we feel the situation is gonna play out or yeah. how we understand that most situations like this might play out, right? Yeah. And so, so many times in our lives, we make decisions based on our own understanding when we don't actually allow God's understanding of our situations and circumstances to be revealed because we're not putting all of our trust in him. Yeah. And that is why this verse is so important. And then it says in this, in all of your ways, always in everything, acknowledge him. And what happens when you acknowledge him? He shall direct your paths. Yeah. He shall make it clear for what you are called to do. And so, and so it's when we lay our yes on the table, our heart is fully trusting in the Lord and that when we submit completely to God, that God will actually take our lives and begin to lead and to guide us so that we know what God wants us to do with our lives, whether it's a workplace, whether it's a situation, whether it's a decision you have to make. And so this is what we have to constantly go back to. We can't do what culture says is cool. We can't do what culture says is important. Sometimes we can't necessarily do what our parents say is cool or important because ultimately, if you are completely trusting in the Lord with all of your heart, soul, and mind, He will direct your paths. Yeah, I think if you guys have never read Proverbs chapter three, you definitely should. The whole thing is kind of like a checklist for you to go down and these verses specifically. First, you need to trust in the Lord. Then you need to lean not on your understanding. So whose understanding are you gonna lean on? God's word. So get into the word of God. That's such a practical step is to, in order to hear God's voice, you gotta know what he sounds like and yes. how he speaks to you. And so if you're not trying to hear God's voice, you're not gonna know which direction to go because you're gonna literally be deaf to the words of God because you have no idea what they sound like so that is something really important and mm -hmm. just as Jacob was saying it's not just some of your ways it's not just your collegiate path and not your relationships it's in every way right. in all of those ways give it over to God and I think that your first step may need to be in this situation is that you have to be willing for your life to go in any direction that it needs to go mm -hmm. because I think we're kind of okay with trusting God as long as our life stays good as long as our life keeps going this way as long as I can stay living in this state or that's long as I make a certain amount, yeah. you know, whatever it is. I'm like, God, this is good. Do what you want, but yeah. this is what I want. Right. And you have to take your hands off of the situation and fully surrender it to God because God's a gentleman. God is not just gonna come and rip your life out of your mm. hands and make you submit to him. You have to do that. That is a choice that you have to make a surrendering that over to mm. him. And so that's the first step. But now you're like, okay, I've surrendered over to God. Now what do I do? So Julia kind of brought us into our first step. And so that's how to decide, right? We've been, you know, understanding how to decide, how we decide, how do we do that? We acknowledge God. What does that mean? We acknowledge his word. We dig into scripture. We dig into the Bible every single day and all of our time that we have to acknowledge him and his word so that we can understand what he wants us to do. Yeah. When we were talking about what the world wants us to do, what culture wants us to do, what people wants us to do, when we acknowledge those things, that's acknowledging the world. But acknowledging the word is digging into the word of God and understanding what God says about you and truly understanding how God calls us to go about these situations because the truth is he has prepared us with everything we need to know in order to make these hard decisions and truly come to a place of how we can decide and know what God is calling us to do or how to know what God wants us to do. And so I think the second step in this is to discern. Okay, I've put my trust in the Lord. I'm acknowledging acknowledging him, how do I discern what I'm supposed to do? I have a couple of different things that I feel like the Lord is popping into my mind of things I could be called to do, or I've got a tough situation in mind and I really have to make a decision. I feel like the Lord is telling me I could go both ways. How do I make a finalized decision and not regret it? Yeah. Right? And so I think that next step looks like understanding how to discern ultimately again like discerning something it's by not leaning on your own understanding mm -hmm. it's like an interpretation right like mm -hmm. if somebody is speaking in Spanish to me I might get I might catch a little bit of it but if I have a translator they're gonna be able to tell me exactly what I need to hear and I'm not gonna have to guess right and so discerning is a little bit of the same thing if God is speaking something to you or maybe it's not God speaking something to you and you're hearing something view discerning as this lens that it needs to pass through before you 
you allow it to be put onto your heart. Right. So if the world is telling you to do something, maybe you need to discern, okay, well, is this God honoring first and foremost? Does this align with scripture? Would God really tell me to do something right. like this, right? And so if that's it, you could just kick that out the window. Mm -hmm. But if it follows the word of God, if it follows God's heart and it honor and glorifies God, then I think your next step is prayer. Like right. you're not meant to know everything. You're not meant to make perfect decisions all the time. So prayer is a very amazing thing that will help you through that by praying, God, help me understand, is this really what you have for me? If it's your will, change my heart to align with what you have for right. me. And just saying that prayer, saying, God, change my heart to align with what you desire for my life. Mm -hmm. That is such a powerful prayer to pray. It's seriously so important. And you're not going to regret talking to God about your situation. Right. And for the person who's been in this situation, it's like, why was I ever put in this situation? You're like, God, why would you allow me to go through certain things? Like God also calls us to different things in different seasons. And so with whatever situation or life circumstance that you're trying to discern and truly understand, how do I know what God wants me to do? Understand that there's a purpose and plan for everything that he does. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, it's plans to prosper you and not to harm you for hope and a future. And so not everything that we go through is always going to be what we see as beneficial and as like this amazing thing. I'm doing what God's calling me to do. So everything's peaceful and amazing. Like oftentimes that's not how life is lived, especially as a Christian. But we have to understand that in every situation, in every circumstance, God has us there for a reason to learn, to grow, and to ultimately be in the place that God wants us to be in so that we can be the best follower of him as possible. And so when we look at how to decide, how to discern, I think the next step that's really important is understanding how to slow down. Because if we don't take time to slow down in our life and acknowledge God in all that we do, we're going to miss it. Yeah. Like we're going to miss the answer that God has for us because we're so busy and going so fast in all these different lanes of life. I mean, I'm sure you've been there and yeah. I know I've been there. You just go, go, go. And you try to do so many things in life that you miss the moment that God has for you or the answer so that you can figure out how you know what God wants you to do in certain situations. Yeah, totally. I wish that when you guys clicked on this video, we could just literally tell you what God wants for you to do. But it's in those quiet moments when you sit down with the Lord is when you're really going to be able to hear from him. And so I think you said it perfectly. Like if you're constantly doing so many things in your life where you're not allowing your mind to fully focus on the Lord and you're just focusing on waiting for an answer and you're not listening on the listening to the process of how to get that answer, right. you're gonna, you might miss it. And we have to constantly, you know, scripture says to constantly renew your mind. And so what does that look like? That looks like renewing your mind with the word. When things are renewed, they're constantly being made new and changed. And so that's what the word of God does. It changes our lives. It renews our minds, our hearts, and our souls. And so that's why it's so important to dig into scripture, to spend time with God, but also to slow down, to have those intimate, close moments with God so we can truly hear what he's calling us to do so that we don't miss the moment and don't miss the answer that God has for each and every single one of us in every life circumstance. And so I think that brings us into the last part where it's like, man, okay, I understand all of this, but I just don't know how to actually step out in faith and say yes. And so this all comes down to the fourth step. Do not be fearful. Do not be fearful at all. Again, we talked about how, how much of an influence the world has on us and people and culture and different things have on our decision making and how we spend our time and who we spend our time with. And at the end of the day, ultimately, we have to take time to not only slow down, but to also not be fearful. To not be fearful of man and live for the approval of man, but instead to live for the approval of God and understand that what he says about us is ultimately the only thing that matters in life. Yeah. Yeah. I that's so good. And I think another thing the Bible says for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So when you are being fearful, that is literally not the will of God for your life, right? Because God has not given you a spirit of fear. And so it can even look like, yes, the fear of man, but also perhaps without a vision of what is coming directly in front of you. Maybe God hasn't revealed that to you yet. I can see how that would be fearful. That could right. be a scary thing. Maybe you have kids. Maybe you have to provide for your family and you're like, God, how am I going to do this? Even even that level of fear, God does not desire for your life. Because mm -hmm. at that point, that is when your fear has to transfer into a full dependency on God. Mm -hmm. You don't have to fear about your future, but you can depend on the Lord to say, God, I can't do this on my own. 
and I don't know how you're gonna do this, but I know you will do this. Mm -hmm. I know you can yeah. do this. So I'm gonna lay it all over to you. And again, it's like this cycle. Anytime you start to fear, you need to start trusting again. Right. And just a just a tip also, fear and gratitude cannot exist in your mind at the same time. It's a scientific study. You can research it if you want. But when you start to feel fearful about your future or fearful about things in your life, thank God for what he's already done mm -hmm. in your life. That you're still alive and breathing. That you have the ability to hear from him. And I think that is a very practical way to help that as well. Yeah, wow, that's good. Fear and gratitude can't exist in your mind at the same time. And so knowing that when that fear kicks in, like we all automatically just have to come back to the gratitude that we have for the Lord and what he's brought us through and the places that he has called us and the yeses that he has placed on the table or the, the doors that he's closed to understand that those are all for our good. And mm -hmm. I think the last thing to understand is God is not a God of confusion. When there is a door open for you and you have to make a decision whether to go through it or not and you spend time discerning and not being fearful, ultimately whatever happens with that decision, we have to understand like there will be peace when you actually step into that and knowing what God has called you to do. I don't want you guys to take this the wrong way. Like you might be in a situation where you know God's called you to do something and you start to not feel peace. Maybe that means God's calling you out of that season to step into something new. But just know that with whatever circumstance you're going through, whatever door is open or whatever decision you have to make or whatever you feel like you're called to do, know that being in tune with the Holy Spirit of God is ultimately the most important thing that you have to do in order to understand in every season of life how to know what God wants you to do, how to know what God has called you to do. Because life is a blur. Let's just be honest. So much goes on in life. There's so many decisions to be made. There's so many situations in life that we can be a part of or choose not to be a part of. And so it looks like leaning on the Lord, trusting in him with all of our heart and constantly asking God, Lord, what do you have for me next? Holy Spirit, guide me and lead me so I can discern and decide what step to take next in my life the second I don't feel peace or the second I feel like you're calling me to something else. And ultimately, these four things are going to help you to the best of your ability to know what God wants you to do in situations or to know what God is calling you to do. And for the person who doesn't know what they're called to yet, for the person who feels like they've messed up decisions or messed up what they've been called to do, for the person who has a decision right now and they don't understand what decision they're supposed to make, God can renew all things and work all things that the enemy meant for evil and to turn them for good. Yeah. Take these things, read scripture into your life and rely on the word of God and not the world and what people say about you and truly acknowledge God in all that you do and he will make straight your paths and ultimately he will reveal to you how to know what he is calling you to do in any situation in life. Yeah, that's so good. One last thing I kind of just like felt led to add is don't be afraid to seek wise counsel either. Like you're not in this alone and I'm sure whether whether it be a pastor or someone you're close with who is in tune with the Holy Spirit as well, ask them to pray for you. Ask them, hey, this is my situation. Do you think this is from God? What do you think I should do? And people can also speak into your life, which is so incredible that God didn't mean for us to do this life alone. We're supposed to do things together. This We do this all the time with each other. We'll be like, is this like good thing or not? We'll be like, yeah or no. So seriously, do not be afraid to ask for help when you feel kind of lost and confused. We've all been there. Amen. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you guys, we hope this video helps you in understanding how to know what God wants you to do or what you are called to do. If you're new here and you haven't, you guys subscribe for more videos like this. Also leave a comment down below of what impacted you the most or some other questions that you might have that you want us to answer. And then lastly, leave a like on this video if you want more people to see it because I feel like this is a topic that not a lot of people talk about. And so y'all, we're so thankful for you guys. We hope this video encourages you. We hope it builds you up. And ultimately, we hope that God is able to lead you and guide you and that you acknowledge him in all that you do so that he can make straight your paths and you can know what God wants you to do. We love you guys and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. See ya.